Mother Nature is so much smarter than we are. She knows exactly what to provide at what time of the year. And if you just take some cues from that intelligence that's in nature, you right there are going to solve a lot of the issues for yourself. So you know that in the summer, Mother Nature provides, you know, foods that and plants that have a lot more water content, a little bit more higher sugar content. There's a reason for that. It's because we need to cool off in the summer. Holistic Voice presents the Food Heals podcast with your hosts, Alison Melody and Susie Hardy. Join the Food Heals nation and learn the secrets to go from feeling unwell to healing yourself. Warning, side effects of this podcast may include increased health and vitality, thoughts of living longer, an increase in sexual activity, feelings of joy, cravings for kale and quinoa, and a spike in Tinder matches. In real cases, women have experienced a strong desire to stop asking their boyfriends if they look fat and stressed. If you experience any of these symptoms, post a selfie to Instagram immediately. All right. Welcome, Food Heals Nation. Thanks for joining me. I'm Allison Melody. Have you ever wanted to learn more about Ayurveda? I'm not talking about one of those which dosha am I quizzes online, right? I'm talking about simple, ancient Ayurvedic practices that can be the key to unlocking a healthy, modern life. That's what today's guest, Dr. Avanti Kumar Singh, is here to share. Having encountered the limitations of Western medicine, Dr. Avanti left her career after years in emergency medicine to study the traditional ancient healing practices of the East with an emphasis in Ayurveda. She now teaches these traditions to students and practitioners all around the world. I'm so excited to share her interview with you today, but first... Food Heals Nation, swag bags are back. That's right. I'm so excited to announce my brand new giveaway. It's full of all of my favorite plant powered products, products like CBD fountain, tinctures and soaps and sanitizers and more from our girl Susie. We've got some energy bits, some sample packs from our girl Catherine. We've got Banish vitamin C skincare products. We've got Organifi nutritional packets and products. We've got some amazing books from some of my amazing clients who wanted to share them with you. You'll also get a copy of my book, Food Heals, that you can give to a friend or family member if you already have your copy. We've got Sandlands Fall Asleep and Stay Asleep tablets. We've got a bottle of Just Thrive probiotics to heal your gut from our girl, Tina. We've got some athletic greens, all the nutrition you need in one day. Got a gorgeous journal from my girl, Alana. And I'm still getting new things shipped to me weekly. So I don't even know what's going to end up in these amazing swag bags, but lots of organic, vegan, beautiful plant powered products. So how do you win? Let me tell you, here's how to enter. Go to amazon.com and search for my book, Food Heals by Allison Melody. Leave the book an honest rating and review. Screenshot that review and you can post it to social media, post it to Facebook or post it to Instagram and use the hashtag Food Heals Swag. Food Heals S-W-A-G. If you don't use social media, you can also email it to me at info at foodhealsnation.com and put food heals swag in the subject line. Now that's all you have to do for one entry. Okay. This is to win one of eight swag bags. There is no purchase necessary. And this giveaway is for United States residents only. I'm so sorry to my international friends. I love you so much. Now, That's how to have one entry, but here's a little secret. You can actually get two more entries. Here's how. So if you already have the book or you decide to order the book, you can post a photo with your review on Amazon. It can be a a photo of you reading the book. It could be a photo of it on your coffee table. It could be any way that you find yourself with the book. Amazon loves these photos and they post them right to the top of the reviews. So that is how you can get a second entry is if you post your review with a photo. Now, the way you can get a third entry is very simple and you might accidentally do it by default, 
But if you have ordered the book from Amazon or you decide to order the book from Amazon, that will count as a verified review. And when you post your review, Amazon will put the little verified sticker next to your name, right? That it's a verified purchase. How cool is that? So that's another way you can get another entry. So when you screenshot your review, I'll be able to see if it says it is verified. Now, if you got the book another way and it's not a verified review, no worries. Your review still counts as one entry. A photo is a second entry and a verified is a third entry. So you can get up to three entries. And this is a total can't lose situation, Food Heals Nation, because more reviews help Amazon show my book to more people, which helps me inspire new readers that the body is designed to heal itself when given the tools that it needs to do so. And that's what I'm all about. And that's what I'm here to share. So I just want more potential readers to be able to get their hands on the life saving information in this book. And it's a win-win because you have the potential to win one of these eight swag bags. Now, if you're thinking, oh, another giveaway, I never win giveaways, or I've won before, that's okay. Listen up. I've only got two entries so far. I have eight swag bags, you guys. So there's still a very, very good chance that you could win this thing, right? And you could get up to three entries doing the things I just told you about. So don't delay. Go ahead and enter today. I really and truly look forward to reading your reviews. Thank you so much for being a part of my Food Heals Nation. All right, next up, my interview with Dr. Avanti. The Food Heals Podcast starts now. She bridges the gap between Western and Eastern medicine, helping others discover the healing wisdom within. Please welcome Dr. Avanti to the show. Thank you for having me. I'm thrilled to be here with you. Really, I would love to know like, what got you started into this self-healing journey that you're on in integrated medicine because you're all about detoxing and breath work and Ayurveda and diet and mind, body, spirit living, which is absolutely in alignment with Food Heals. But how did you get here? Was there a catalyst that brought you to this place? Yeah, actually. Well, so I'm a physician by training. I was trained in Western medicine, actually in emergency medicine, but I'm South Asian and first generation. So I grew up with Ayurveda, actually, just that was the way we lived. And so it's really, um, you know, that story that you hear from many of us who are in integrative medicine and doing Eastern healing or a combination of healing modalities is that we find ourselves in a place where we are looking for answers because we're suffering. And, you know, we go looking for answers. And really, for me, it was during my medical training that I had a lot of health issues because I was completely out of sync with my life and out of sync with nature. And I really reflected on what my lifestyle was at that time, but what it had been like, you know, for most of my younger years up until the time that I left home. And really because I'd never had any health problems before. And then suddenly I get to medical training and I'm learning how to help other people heal. And here I am suffering and getting sicker every day, right? It's the ultimate irony. And so really that was sort of the catalyst of me looking for answers and always, you know, basically getting blood drawn and getting labs and advice from my peers and colleagues and really everyone saying, there's nothing wrong with you. You're just stressed. You have a lot going on. You're, you know, in your medical training, you have uh, two young children and you're married. So you just have a lot going on. So of course you're not well, but that wasn't enough for me. So I had to go looking for answers. Yes, I'm so glad that you did because I think a lot of people would take that and they do and they go, yeah, I'm stressed out, but that's not going to solve the problem to know that you're stressed out, right? Right. And so what did you do and what did you discover? So really, you know, I went back to basics. I went back to the way I grew up. I started talking to people in my family, specifically my mother and my father, and started really reflecting on the way that we lived all growing up, I mean, you know, Ayurveda was just part of our daily lives. It was just the way we did everything from the, you know, the the routines that we had every day to, you know, changing, you know, I give, I always tell a story about my mom, um, changing the color of the cushions for, with the seasons, right? To be in harmony with nature, the different foods that you would eat at different times of the year. I mean, this was just the way that we lived. So, 
I really was reflecting on that and I thought, oh, well, there's something there. And I started reading more and doing more self-study and ultimately, you know, got more advanced training in Ayurveda. And it kind of just went from there. I, as I studied more, as I learned more, I shared more with my patients and with my family and friends. And the next thing I know, I'm teaching at, you know, medical conferences, I'm teaching medical students and medical peers and yoga students, and it just goes on and on and on. <laughs> so it was amazing because my own interest, my own search for these answers led to me having these deep experiences and really being able to reflect on my life, but then also being able to bring in my training, my Western training, and sort of finding that balance between the two. There was a lot of magic there because I have an understanding of Western medicine and, and the physiology and the biochemistry and the pharmacology and all of that, the pathology. But then I also have a deep understanding of the Ayurvedic principles. But then I also have a deep understanding of the Ayurvedic principles because I've lived them, right? I've lived them since I was a kid. So that's a long answer to your question. <laughs> that's okay. I loved it. And I loved hearing about your upbringing and what a beautiful way to grow up. And what is so interesting is like, you don't even realize that that shapes you until much later in life, right? When you're like, well, let me go back to the way that I was raised and the under, my understanding of the world. And I love how you can combine your training in emergency and Western medicine with the practices of the East. I mean, that is so cool. So how does that show up for you now? And how did you go from stressed out mess to, mm -hmm. oh, now I'm feeling better, I'm doing better, and I'm changing my career? How did that transition occur? Well, it happened both slowly and all at once. <laughs> it's kind of an <laughs> ironic thing, you know. I took small steps every day to start healing myself. I had to start with me, right, before I could, you know, help anybody else. And that was very apparent to me, you know, being in medical training, trying to take care of patients and help them, but I'm suffering so much. You know, I'm not much used to anybody. I'm not really helping other people if I can't help myself. So I really took that seriously. I did small things every day, which, you know, I'm sure we'll get into. And then at the same time, so that was a slow process, but then it was also sort of like I got to a point where I said, okay, you know what, if I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this. And so I left Western medicine. That's quite literally what I did. And so it was both slow and fast in a way. <laughs> um, but, you know, it really, like I said, it really began with me starting with myself and then teaching other people as I felt better. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is why this works. This is why this works. I get it. It's not just what my my grandfather, my Babaji, as I called him, you know, would just giggle and say, you know, in, in Hindi to me, Naibita, you know, no, no, my child, we don't, we don't eat yogurt in the winter. You know, when I never questioned that, I started reading, well, why is that? And it became so intuitive. It, it just made intuitive sense that that's how you live in harmony with nature, which is the point of Ayurveda. But then also, you know, there were so many things that I started to think about and correlate with what we know in medical science. And so that scientific brain of mine could kind of rest and say, okay, there's a basis for this. I mean, these, these Vadyas, these, these mystics who you know, 5,000 years ago wrote down this information in the Vedic texts, they knew what they were talking about. They didn't have the science and the data, but they knew. So yeah, so it was, a, it was an interesting process for me. I would love for you to take us through um, some of the principles because I find it so fascinating. Like, why don't we eat yogurt at this time? And I've had experiences like this in my own life because I'm trying to always learn and expand my mind. And in the early stages of my journey of, you know, my food heals journey and discovering like food and nutrition and what was going to work for me. I remember I went a little bit too far into this raw fruit and vegetable diet for a little while. And I went to my acupuncturist because I wasn't <laughs> feeling good. And she said, Allison, it's winter, eat some rice. Like, what are you doing? You know? <laughs> And I didn't know any better because I was still on the journey of discovery, but I would love to learn some of those principles and how we can incorporate them into our lives today. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, really the basic essence of Ayurveda is that when you live in harmony with nature, you will have optimal health and a vibrant life. That literally is, if you can sum it down to one sort of basic principle, that's it. Live in harmony with nature, 
and you'll be okay. Now, how do you do that? That's the more complicated part, yes. right? <laughs> I'm like, that's awesome. Now tell me how. What pillows do I need to switch out in my head? Exactly. So the idea here is that, you know, everything, we believe in Ayurveda, that everything in the universe, including human beings and plants and animals, all are made of the same five elements, air, space, fire, water, and earth. And we have different proportions of those elements within us. Now, all of those elements have qualities. You know, Ayurveda is a qualitative science. It's not quantitative like Western medicine, right? Mm -hmm. Where we're talking about, you know, numbers and lab values and normal values and, you know, uh, images and all that kind of stuff. That's not what we're talking about. So right there, there's a perspective shift, right? It's very intuitive. It's about qualities, hot and cold, mobile and stable, you know, dry and oily. You get the idea. And mm -hmm. so the idea here is that, you know, when you look at the qualities of something, right, you can increase those qualities of a specific element. And when those become too much, you'll get out of balance. So mm -hmm. if you have too much air, uh, too much of the air qualities or the space qualities, you will um, start to get out of balance, right? Or if you have too much or too little of the fire qualities, you will start to get out of balance. That's really the, you know, sort of the fundamental sort of idea. And these elements and these qualities are also bioenergies. They exist uh, not only in human beings and plants and animals and you know, living things, but also in times of the day, in the seasons, in um, the quality of symptoms that we have, in the qualities of the foods that we eat, right? So it's these qualities that we talk about in Ayurveda. And really, it comes down to one simple principle, which is what I call the golden principle, which is like increases like and opposites reduce. So if you start to think about the qualities of, let's say, a symptom, something that's showing up for you, right? A symptom basically is anything. It can be very subtle. It can be very obvious. It could be something as small as a headache that you're getting every now and then, or it could be something as obvious as migraine head headaches that, you know, put you out for a couple of days. That's an extreme. But the point is, is that symptom is showing up to tell you that you have some sort of imbalance going on. And so what you do is that you, then you say to yourself, okay, well, I have the symptom. What are the qualities of that symptom? And you can start to define, you can just intuitively, you know, a headache, how does it feel to you? What are the qualities? It's sharp. It's hot. It's stable. It's not mobile. It's not moving, right? So you can, you can start to assign qualities to that symptom. And then using the golden principle of like increases like, you want to choose remedies that have the opposite qualities to start bringing that symptom, those qualities back into balance. So for a headache, you might need to do something that has a little bit more mobility, depending on what kind of headache you have. Um, you might need to, if it's very sharp, you need to add some dullness and some stillness. You know, that could be another thing for you. If it's very, very hot, you may need to cool it down somehow, right? Does that, does that kind of make sense? This is really interesting because I'm thinking about something I've discovered for myself, and I wonder if this falls within the principle without me even knowing it. But one of the things for me is that, when I get tired, let's say, um, but not tired enough to take a nap, but like too tired to continue on my work day, let's say, like you're just in that in between. It's like mm -hmm. coffee is not the answer and napping no. is not the answer. But for me, it's taking a walk, which sounds counterintuitive because that uses energy. So I'm like, why would I do something active when I'm tired? But it completely reinvigorates and gets rid of the tired. And it's very interesting to hear you say that because I'm like, I wonder if I'm doing this by accident. <laughs> yep. It's exactly that, right? Because what you're doing is that you're having the symptom of stability, right? Of immobility, right? Of feeling very tired. And so you're doing something that's opposite to balance that out. So in that instance, you're, you're bringing yourself back into balance by moving some energy through you, going for a walk, doing some jumping jacks, whatever it is, right? So the thing is, is that, Allison, you're, you're, you're actually tapping into this, the exact thing that I'm trying to teach people, which is this is intuitive. This is not something, I mean, you can learn these principles, but if you just start to, you know, get still, get quiet, you actually have the answers of how to heal, 
you may not know exactly why, or you may need some help, but the answers of like who you need to go to for help or what small step you could take to start to bring yourself back into balance. Yes. I definitely agree with that. And sometimes it's sitting in the stillness and you're like, oh, that's scary. That's hard. Like I have to listen to something. I have to watch something. And that's an avoidance of feelings we don't want to feel. But when you get really still and you allow yourself, well, let me feel that feeling and go address what's going on, you can actually get healed and get to the solution a lot quicker than avoidance, which I think most people are kind of trained to do because it's easy to go watch TV, to go get something to eat, to go pop a pill. And getting still might be seem harder. But then once you realize, hey, it works and it gets me to the solution faster, then you start to adopt it as a, this is what happened for me, I think, is then it became a go-to rather than an avoid. Where before I'd be like, get still, be quiet, meditate, heck no. Now I'm like, let's go get still. (laughs) Yeah, right. You know, and because, you know, the difference here is that What you're doing by getting still, you may not be solving the problem, right? You may not even know what the problem exactly is, but you are going in the direction of getting to the root of the problem because you're in that reflection. Whereas if you just look for a solution and, and, you know, numb or, or just like look it up on the internet or whatever it is, or just, you know, go outside of yourself that's very much, you know, the Western model of symptom remedy, (laughs) you know, like let's, you know, get rid of that symptom and the rest will be okay, which, you know, I get it. That is actually a very valid thing to do. You know, if you're, if you have a migraine headache, you just want the pain to go the way, like just good to go away. You want that pain just gone. I get it. And at the same time, at some point, it's a good idea to sit down and get still and understand, well, where is this starting from so that I can avoid it happening in such severity again and again and again? I might know what the triggers are, right? That, that's sort of the idea here. Food Heals Nation, longtime listeners of this show know my beliefs. And if you're a new listener, you just know the name of the show. I believe that food heals. I believe that food and nutrition are the key and the basis to good health. And our bodies are these amazing machines, right? Our bodies turn food into energy. Our bodies heal wounds. Our bodies support our consciousness, our higher selves, and so much more but our bodies need the right fuel. It needs the right signals to function at its best. Some of these signals actually include adaptogens. What are adaptogens? Adaptogens are these crazy cool compounds that balance hormones and help us deal with stress in a healthier way. And we all have stress, so we've got to be figuring out ways to deal with that, right? If you're feeling tired, these adaptogenic compounds will give you that boost of energy. If you're feeling stressed, adaptogens help you return to a natural state of calm. That's what adaptogens are. They help you adapt to the stress in your life. They help your body adapt and heal and go back to perfect balance. Now, where do you get adaptogens? One of my absolute favorite sources that I take on the daily is Organifi. Organifi, they just create these delicious superfood blends that you just mix in with water. You know I'm obsessed with Organifi Gold. It's like my turmeric latte at the end of the day that helps me fall asleep, and it's so lovely. And they have so many other products. Organifi just makes it easy to get more adaptogens into our daily lives like ashwagandha and reishi mushrooms and all of these cool things that help the body adapt to everything that we're going through on a daily basis. So if you're looking for a way, an easy way to support your amazing body, I highly, highly recommend trying some Organifi products. And you guys, I've got two special things for you because not only do I have a discount code for Organifi, but Organifi has also donated some amazing products for the swag bags that I talked about in the beginning. So you can enter to win that giveaway and you can win some Organifi products, but you can just go right now to Organifi.com and use the coupon code FOODHEALS. You'll get 15% off any item in the store. Go check them out. Again, that's Organifi, O-R-G-A-N-I-F-I.com. Coupon code FOODHEALS will get you 15% off. 
Well, Food Heals Nation, while you're listening to this, I am actually at Podcast Movement in Nashville. That's right. Conferences are back and I am here to look my best. Okay. So one of the things that's helping me look my best is my beautiful jewelry from Anna Luisa. I am wearing their necklace. I'm wearing their ring and I'm wearing their bracelet. And, uh, I was already getting compliments back in Florida. And now that I'm here, people are loving the line of jewelry because it's all very beautiful and high end looking. I'm wearing them to dinners. I'm going to wear them on stage when I get up there to talk about sponsorship. Wish me luck, you guys. But yeah, I'm just, I, they make me confident. I feel, I feel real cute as well. I'm going to say. I love Anna Luisa's mission and message and of course their quality. I like to get behind a brand that matters, that cares about what they're doing, that cares about their carbon footprint on the earth, but can also make nice things because I like nice things, but I don't want to contribute to things that I don't want to be a part of, like the fast fashion, right? So 100% of the carbon emissions related to Anna Luisa's products life cycle are offset. That is awesome. That is something that I can get behind. The jewelry is beautiful. The quality is exceptional. The pieces last a long time. They're crafted with care from the best notable metals. And there's a 365 day warranty. That's pretty awesome. New collections are released every Friday, so you can go to the website and see what's new. Of course, I scored you a discount code. Go to www.analuisa.com slash foodheals, and you're going to get 10% off your order. These pieces are a great gift for yourself or a gift for a loved one. If you got a birthday coming up, we know the holidays are only a few months away. You never know how early in advance you guys plan. Um, so yeah, check them out. AnnaLuisa.com slash Food Heals. Use the coupon code Food Heals. You'll get 10% off these timeless, chic, long lasting, versatile jewelry pieces. Check them out and let me know what you think. So tell me about some examples of what this can work for. Because I know it's like everything, but like I just brought up um, being tired. That's one of mine. You brought up a headache. Like what are some examples where you've seen the opposite, maybe work for yourself or work for your clients that you may not think about? Like I never thought about the walk thing until I just did it and it started working. And I realized, I guess intuitively, I had, whether I recognized it or not, I had listened to my intuition, right? But then once you start to recognize, oh, my intuition works, you're able to listen to it more. You're able to trust yourself more. You're able to get into that quiet space more. So what are some examples that you've seen? So I think one of the the best examples I can give, which I think is actually quite helpful to a lot of people, especially in this time of, you know, (laughs) reemergence from a uh, crazy world that we're in right now, is anxiety. You know, this is an easy one to really understand and grasp this idea. So anxiety is thought of, you know, quickly move like thoughts that are moving quickly across the mind. That's that's it's a busy mind, right? That's another way of looking at anxiety, a lot of worry, just movement of those thoughts really rapidly through the body, through the mind. And so what are the qualities of anxiety? Anxiety has a lot of qualities of the element of air. And so some of the qualities of air are mobile, dry, cool, light. Most people or a lot of people have been told that when they're anxious, they need to go burn off that energy. And, you know, being a yoga therapist, I I know this for a fact that that does not work for everybody. Burning off energy can actually make somebody more anxious. And the reason is exactly this, like increases like. So if you have, if you're going and running, right, to burn off that anxiety, that's more of the same qualities. Running has the qualities of air, light, cool, movement, or mobile, right? That's going to increase your anxiety. Now, that's not to say you shouldn't run if you have anxiety because that actually does work for a lot of people. The trick here is that you need to balance that with the opposite so that you don't get into more of an anxious state and so that actual running actually does help. So when you're looking at anxiety, right, again, like increases like, opposites reduce. Anxiety has the qualities of air, light, cool, dry, mobile. So we want to pick remedies. We want to do things that that have qualities that are the opposite, right? So things that are a little bit heavier, a little bit more stable, a little bit more warm, 
Those are the types of things we want to do. When I teach Ayurveda, I talk about three areas of remedy, the routines that you do every day, your diet, and then the tools of yoga. So let's start with routines. So what could be something you could do? I find that a lot of people who have anxiety actually have a very busy schedule. It's kind of all over the place. They're doers. They're multitaskers. Type A's. Yeah, type A, right? And, and one of the best things that you can do for somebody who has a lot of anxiety is to have a schedule, right? To create some stability, to create these touchstones throughout your day so that you have a way for your nervous system to relax. So you can, that's the opposite quality, right? All that mobility of moving from task to task to task to thing to event to this to that right? What you're doing by creating some schedule and some regularity in your schedule and in your day is you are doing the opposite. You're creating some stability. You're cultivating that quality of stable, which is opposite to mobile, which is a quality of anxiety. Is that pretty clear? Yeah. It makes a lot of sense. Um, As a recovering type A, I have (laughs) been this person and not having a schedule, I always thought was freedom. I'd be like, I don't have to answer to anyone because I work for myself. But where the freedom, where you don't have freedom is that the work never ends. So you could work until 10 o'clock at night because no one's telling you to stop because my mentality, and I've switched this a lot of a lot throughout the years, but originally was I was the entrepreneur who would work 80 hours a week for myself to avoid working 40 hours a week for someone else. Well, that means <laughs> there's no relaxation built in, right? Because you're just like, well, I'm going to work hard. I'm going to achieve. And that keeps you very busy and it keeps your anxiety very high. And when no one's telling you, okay, it's five o'clock or whatever time people get off work these days to stop work and go home and spend time with your family or do something active or whatever it is that you would do, um, you're missing out on those things. And so your body's not getting that reset. So I do, I've been there. I get that. I've been that anxiety person without the schedule. And I really had to shift my mindset and go, well, that's the time for work. And this is the time for play and to cut it off. Exactly. Exactly. You've got it. So, I mean, again, it's it's very intuitive. It just makes sense. You know, when you kind of get out of your head, this is one of those things that like, you know, when you're learning a dance step or like a new dance, like you're learning how to dance and you, you start thinking about like where your feet are going and you just will start stepping on yourself because you're overthinking it. It's sort of the same thing. When you start to overthink this, it becomes much more complicated. But if you just relax into it, you're like, oh, that makes sense. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I could decrease my anxiety if I just had some schedule, you know. Right. I had right. a re- regular schedule or created some kind of regularity for myself. It just makes intuitive sense. I like that. All right. So you said you had three. Yes. Okay. So what were the other two? Okay. So let's then we'll move into the next remedy, which is diet. Okay. So continuing with this example of anxiety, right? Again, anxiety has the qualities of air, which is cool, light, dry, and mobile. The opposite would be warm, heavy, stable. So what you want to do is that you want to eat foods that have those qualities. Again, I find that a lot of people who have a lot of anxiety really eat a lot of cold foods and beverages, and they also have a lot of raw foods and beverage or yeah, raw foods and raw smoothies. And again, there is no good or bad. I'm not making a judgment. You know, there's no such thing in Ayurveda as good or bad. It just depends on what's going on for you. Everything is good and bad depending on the person, depending on the time of, you know, uh, year for them in the sense of, again, not good and bad, but either health supporting or health weakening. And so, A lot of people who have a lot of anxiety will be eating these cold, raw foods a lot. And all you have to do is just warm up your diet a little. So, you know, eating cooked vegetables and grains. Um, You know, if you're going to have a smoothie, especially in the summer, which is, you know, a little bit more balancing in the summer because it's very hot outside, make your, you know, make it, make sure it's room temperature. Don't let it be ice cold. You want to, just, you know, soups, stews, anything that's cooked. And it doesn't have to be hot. Like we're in the summer. It's hot. It's very hard to eat something hot, but even just lukewarm is good and cooked because anything that is cooked by an outside fire is easier for your internal fire to digest. And so 
that's how you remedy it using diet for anxiety. Yeah, it's just very interesting because there's so many different schools of thought about diet. And obviously, you know, we don't need to go into all of that now, but I do believe in finding the diet that works for you and that there's no perfect diet for everybody because it depends on so many factors, your blood type, your hormones, your age, your food allergies, your sensitivities, where you live, what's in your soil, what is depleted, what do you have an overabundance of, right? And so it's so multifactorial that we're trying so hard hard to figure out, well, what's the best diet for us and not even taking those things into account. When I was on that raw food diet, it was because I was on a detox diet. I was all about trying to detox at that time, detox my body um, and do like a raw food diet cleanse. And look, that doesn't mean I can't do it in the summer and when it's right for me, but I was trying to do it in the middle of winter. And literally I was not feeling well. And I was like, This has to work. So my mind was overriding my body going, but I know this works because it's worked for all these people and all these gurus talk about. So my brain was overriding what my body was feeling and I wasn't listening to my intuition. It took me going to acupuncture because I didn't feel well and I knew that acupuncture always helped me for her to say, eat some damn warm food. What are you doing? (laughs) But like, I couldn't see it because I had gotten dogmatic in my beliefs. So I guess my point is here, when it comes to food, it's very easy. And I know I've done it even on the healthy route, become too dogmatic. And well, you know, you, I have to eat this way in order to feel vibrant all the time. But that's going to change month to month, season to season. Yeah, you know, and it's it's actually goes to a really good point that I, I often teach when I'm teaching workshops and, and talking to even individual patients. And I give them the example of, you know, there is no such thing as a perfect diet that doesn't exist. And, you know, all of these diets that come out, they're actually all correct, but not for all the year and not for every person in every situation. Again, if you were to do some of these diets, you know, uh, more of a uh, raw diet and then a, you know, low carb diet and a high fat diet. I mean, if you, if you went through them throughout the year and changed them every few months, that would be exactly right. Because what you're doing is you're mimicking nature. And so, you know, the other point here is that really, Mother Nature is so much smarter than we are. She knows exactly what to provide at what time of the year. And if you just take some cues from that intelligence that's in nature, you right there are going to solve a lot of the issues for yourself. So you know that in the summer, Mother Nature provides, you know, foods that and plants that have a lot more water content, a little bit more higher sugar content. There's a reason for that. It's because we need to cool off in the summer and stay hydrated. (laughs) So that's why Mother Nature gives that. We shouldn't be eating strawberries in the middle of winter. Notice Mother Nature doesn't give us strawberries in the middle of winter because we need things that are a little bit heavier and have a higher fat content and more carbohydrates, right? Because that's going to keep us warmer. Just a simple example, but it goes exactly to the point that you're making, Allison, which is there is no perfect diet for everybody. Exactly. And I think that it's something that once you learn for yourself, you can absolutely change your life. And so someone was just getting started in this or they're like, you know what? I I like my diet and I've pretty much figured it out, but I want to learn how to eat with mother nature, how to eat Ayurvedically, if that's a word, if how to eat more seasonally. What where would you recommend they start? What are some resources? Well, honestly, one of the easiest things that you can do is if you go to the grocery store, look at what's cheapest in the grocery store in in the produce section, because that tells you what's abundant locally or more locally. Strawberries are cheaper in the summer than they are in the winter. <laughs> you know? Exactly. So that's a really great place to start just right there. You don't have to look anything up. You don't have to like go outside. Again, you can get a little more intuitive and, and just look around when you're in the grocery store and see what is in season, it's going to be cheaper in the grocery store. And sort of, you know, head towards those foods instead of the other ones. That will start to change things right there for you. 
And the nutrition component can't be overlooked because if you think about something that's in season in another country, but not here, it has to be shipped over. It's losing nutrition on the way. It's probably sprayed with chemicals. It's very hard to um, keep that nutrition. And, and why would you want that, right? And so why not eat the things that are going to be grown locally and seasonally and have more nutrition and better for your body? Right, exactly. So I think that that, you know, that is actually probably the simplest and probably one of the most profound ways to start. Just start there. Because again, you know, I think in in Western culture, we're very focused on trying to do everything all at once. And we also complicate things. We think it has to be some really complicated answer for it to make, you know, any kind of a difference. And my experience of, you know, being a physician for 20 plus years and, and really studying this is that it is the small changes that have the most profound effects on your health. That's true every time. Absolutely. And we do love to overcomplicate things. Let's not. I mean, like, it's so <laughs> true. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. I think that's one of our addictions sometimes is to overcomplicate things and make things hard on ourselves when they really don't have to be. Like food is simple, food heals or food kills. So choose the food that are going to heal you and help your body thrive. All right. What's the third? The third is the tools of yoga. And when I say tools of yoga, I mean all the tools. You know, I'm trying to help redefine and go back to what true yoga means. Yoga is not just about the posture, which again, that sort of is has become the focus in Western culture. And that really misses the point. So I say tools of yoga because we're talking about breath work. We're talking about meditation. We're talking about the postures or the asana. We're talking about, you know, uh, chanting and mantra and visualization. I mean, there's so many gestures. There's so many things. But the three main ones that I really focus in on are meditation, breath work, and movement, whatever kind. And so again, you're going to think about what are those, what are some things that I can do within meditation, movement, and breath work that are going to help cultivate the opposite qualities of the symptom of anxiety, things that are a little more stable or grounding, things that, you know, you're not moving so much, things that are a little more relaxing and sort of, you know, again, grounding, pulling you down to the earth. So things like doing yoga on the floor, you know, supine seated positions are really, really great for someone with anxiety. You know, meditating uh, with, if you're doing a visualization, visualizing something that is solid, you know, a mountain or tree roots, right? That those, those are the opposite qualities of that movement of air in anxiety. Um, so though, that's sort of the way to think about it when you're thinking about the tools of yoga. When, when you're talking about breath work, you know, really focusing on the exhale of part of the breath and lengthening the exhale, that is very relaxing. It helps to shift us from our sympathetic nervous system into our parasympathetic nervous system. And it calms us and grounds us. I mean, I went through those really fast, but you get the idea. Again, you're doing these tools of yoga. You're using these tools of yoga in the ways that help to cultivate these opposite qualities of whatever symptom is showing up for you. Well, I love breath work and kundalini yoga practices um, have really enabled me to shift my mindset, my body so quickly. It's very surprising. It's like you can have a breath work session that you do on your own or a kundalini yoga session for three to five minutes and you're a completely different person than you were. Like if you were angry or frustrated or whatever it might be, you can completely mm -hmm. shift that energy in your body. And I know you're passionate about this too. So what's a simple breath work routine that we can use to change our mood, to increase our energy, to get to that opposite that we're trying to get to of whatever it is we may be feeling? Well, really, it just starts with a basic understanding of the of the breath, of the two parts of the breath. There are four parts of the breath, technically, in, in, when we talk in yogic terms, but we're just going to, we're going to divide it into two, the inhale and the exhale. And mm -hmm. if you just understand this basic principle, you can tap into the power of the breath 
at any moment, just like you were saying, to shift yourself, you know, out of an anxious state into a more calm state or to energize yourself from sort of like a, you know, you're like kind of just really having a brain fog or not focused or just kind of really, really tired. You can shift yourself into an energe- more energized state just by understanding one, like, you know, the simple principle. The inhale is activating and the exhale is calming or relaxing. If you just remember that, you can tap into the power of breath, right? Because breath is where the body and the mind meet. Our nervous system controls our breath, and that also controls every other thing that's going on in our body. So when you focus in on the breath, you can change what's going on in your nervous system instantly. That we know physiologically. That's why it's so incredibly powerful. And you can and you can literally shift yourself in just, you know, 30 seconds. An easy way to do this is really, again, depending on what effect you're going for, if you either need activating or you want calming, you are going to lengthen or extend that part of the breath. So for example, let's let's go back to the example of anxiety. We'll just continue with that. For somebody who has a lot of anxiety, you're in sort of a activated state. So you need to calm yourself down. You need to do the opposite to kind of ground yourself. You want to work with the exhale part of the breath because that is calming. So you want to extend the exhale part of the breath. Really, there's three ways to do this. And what you're going to do is you're going to link it to something. You're either going to link it to a count to help you extend it. You can link it to a movement or you can link it to an affirmation or a mantra, whatever you want to, whatever you want to call it. And so you can go from, let's say, an exhale of a count of two to an exhale count of three, or an exhale, uh, and that's just by counting. You could do that by doing some simple movement. Let's say you start with your arms, you know, way up at the top, like above your head, and then you're going to exhale your arms down, right? To lengthen the exhale, you could stop midway and then come down. So right there, you've lengthened your exhale by linking it to a movement. And the third way is to link it to an affirmation. So you might say on your exhale in your in your mind, you know, I am strong. But then you could extend that affirmation on the exhale and say in your mind, I am strong and peaceful. Right there, you've extended your exhale. Simple things to do. But that's really, that is the basics. You don't have to do anything fancy. Again, simple is profound and very powerful. If you just tap into the inhale or the exhale, depending on what effect you're going for, and just make them longer than your normal rate, you will be able to shift yourself. Food Heals Nation, what if I told you that there was a way to reverse aging and rejuvenate your biological age by one to 12 years within only three months. Do you believe it? Stick with me for a minute, okay? So think about this. 99% of your molecules in your body are water, okay? So that's why the quality of the water that we're drinking literally determines the quality of our lives. So enter Analemma. Analemma is a revolutionary new device. It's so cool, you guys. They sent it to me. It's so easy to use. It literally transforms your regular tap water into its supercharged, structured, coherent state. So in regular water, H2O molecules move in this like chaotic manner, okay? By swirling the analemma through the water, it transforms the water by rearranging the H2O molecules into a liquid crystalline structure, okay? So that structure and stability have a remarkable influence on all living things. So that's us, right? That's our bodies. So Analemma team, they tested the water on humans, animals, and plants, and the results have been remarkable. The water, the Analemma water regenerates your entire body. It balances your brain waves and puts your entire being into a state of coherence. 
And like I said at the beginning, they did a study with glycan age that showed that drinking this water rejuvenates our biological age by one to 12 years within only three months. How cool is that? Don't you want to try it right now? I'm using it every day. I'm traveling right now. Like I told you earlier, I'm in Nashville. Um, I'm drinking, I'm not, I, I, I'm a person that has to go and get bottled water as soon as they arrive anywhere. Cause they don't trust the tap water. That's just how I am. But now I've got my Anna Lama and I'm using it and it's awesome. I'm going to use it all week. I'll keep you posted. But, um, if you're alive, you should be drinking water and a lot of it. It's as simple as that. So of course, you know, I scored you an exclusive discount code food heals will get you 10% off your purchase. That's at analemma-water.com. Let me spell it for you. I know it's a mouthful. A-N-A-L-E-M-M-A-Water.com. Use the Food Heals discount code. Get 10% off your order. Analemma-Water.com. Okay, so I'm here in Nashville and I go downstairs because I'm in my hotel and I go to use their gym. And I literally had to run back upstairs because I forgot my new workout supplement from Sovereignty. So I came back up, got my Sovereignty on and went back down to work out and I got more energy. You know, I, I just did a road trip here yesterday or the, yeah, for, um, it's a six and a half hour drive, but I think it took me eight or nine just cause I'm like stopping. I found a cool vegan restaurant, you know, I'm doing my thing. I'm taking my time, listening to my audiobooks and podcasts, but you know, I got here and I'm tired. It was a long day. Um, but I got up, got my workout on. I was tired, but I did get the ex- extra energy that I needed from sovereignty. So let me tell you a little bit more about sovereignty. They create game changing supplements to take your workouts to the next level, make your endless to do list feel like a cakewalk. Here I am, you know, I'm at a conference. I'm a little bit on vacation, but I'm here to work. Um, but I should be at the conference and I'm still crossing everything off of my to-do list, including recording for you food heal. So I got a to-do list. I need to feel amazing all the time. So my sovereignty is definitely helping. And they also have supplements to help you fall asleep and stay asleep that are easier to take than counting sheep. <laughs> So if you're feeling unmotivated, if you're lacking focus, you can have the best day every day with Purpose Plus. Purpose Plus is a blend of CBD and CBG, a mood-enhancing hemp-derived ingredient, Um, seven clinically studied ingredients with the world's best adaptogens. We talked about adaptogens earlier. Very important to help the body heal. This is to deliver results that you can feel almost immediately. I I did feel it quickly uh, this morning. And the supplement empowers and supports your mind and body to feel better, be better, and achieve new levels of productivity. I love anything that helps me be productive. You guys know I'm type A. But then I also need, after a very productive and often hectic day, really good sleep. So for sleep, they've got their Dream Plus, which relaxes and calms the mind and body, helping you fall asleep and stay asleep longer. So I will be taking that tonight. Now, I love this company. They gave us a Food Heals discount code where you can get 20% off your purchase. Thank you. And they offer a money back guarantee on your first purchase within 30 days of your purchase. And I just love their tagline, sip, focus, flow, settle, sip, sleep. So get your sovereignty on. That's at sovereignty.co, S-O-V-E-R-E-I-G-N-T-Y.co and use the coupon code FOODHEALS for 20% off your purchase. Yeah, the breath is extremely powerful and I almost think unless you have taken some classes or really experienced it for yourself, people do take it for granted. And it's like, no, this is something that you can do in minutes a day and completely change the way you're feeling. You were talking about headaches earlier. I've certainly used breath work as a tool to rid myself of headaches. Even crying, dancing, different ways of letting things out of your body. Like I'm shaking, you can't see me, but I'm shaking my hands because it's something that I do when if I feel an emotion come on quick, um, I shake just like I learned this because animals shake what, to shake off trauma. So if let's say two dogs get into a fight on the street or something, then they go and shake to get rid of the mm-hmm. trauma. So I have incorporated in that in my life with the shaking, with the dancing, with the breath work, with slow. I, I like um, this. I mean, I like yoga as a workout as well, but for healing, I like a slow and very breath um, oriented yoga 
And this doesn't mean I have to go for an hour and a half, which can be intimidating to some people. I can do it at my house, just like you said, on the on the floor um, or in the grass if you have a yard, because um, it's nice to get outside sometimes and be in nature, as you said earlier. So these are all things that I love. Um, so thank you for bringing them up. And these are all also things that strengthen our immune system. So I know you have some strategies for immune system strengthen. So I'd love to um, wrap up on some of those. Yeah, absolutely. We've we've touched on quite a few of those, but you know, really the way that we strengthen our immune system is by shifting our nervous system out of the sympathetic nervous response into a parasympathetic nervous response, right? And so how can we do that? How we can how can we shift ourselves from this acute stress that we're always in, right? It's like a gas pedal that's being revved up all the time. You know, the engine's being revved and and eventually it just burns out. And so we need to put the brakes on. <laughs> we need to learn how to do that so that we can calm our whole system down because we know that inflammation is linked to a high stress response. It creates a whole cascade of hormones, which is much more than what we have time to talk about. But that's really the connection between, you know, inflammation, your immunity, and the nervous system. And so really the goal again is to shift into this parasympathetic state. So how can you do that really using the the remedies of Ayurveda? And this is really sort of the strategies that I have. And there's really four simple things that you can do as a starting point. Again, routines are the basis of Ayurveda. What you do every day matters the most. It's not about what you do every now and then. It's about what you do every day. So you want to tune into creating routines. You know, think about your wake time, your sleep time, and your meal times. Those are three, the first three things, right? Create some regularity around those. I always say your day starts the night before. Your sleep is so incredibly important for um, detoxifying your body, for creating that rest and that energy that you're going to need for the next day. It resets your hormones. There's, there's so many reasons that sleep is so important. And so really looking at your sleep time, are you staying awake really, really late? I know that, you know, with the pandemic, it's become very easy to stay up late watching TV or, you know, connecting with the family that you're living with or whatever it is. It's really important that you look at your bedtime and try and move it as close as you can to 10 p.m. at the latest. That's really important. And so look at your sleep time. That's the first thing to really boost your immunity. The second is look at your wake time. You want to wake within, you know, about a half an hour of sunrise. That will actually let you tap into the most, the energy of that early morning is extremely healing. And so looking at your your wake time and creating some regularity is really, really important. The third thing is looking at your meal times. And the specific thing that I would say is try to eat your largest meal at lunch in the middle of the day. That's when your digestion is the strongest. So again, you're aiding your body and really pulling out the nutrients and um that are in your food, all the stuff that you need and getting rid of what you don't because your digestion is working the best in the middle of the day. That's the third thing. And then the fourth thing is getting some natural sunlight every morning if you can before 10 a.m. The reason this is so important is that there's a couple of reasons. Well, first of all, you're getting out in nature and nature's healing because of prana, because of the life force energy. The second is hopefully you're going to go for a little walk and you're just going to get some movement in. But the third and sort of the most important thing is that you are resetting your circadian rhythm every morning. And that is so important for your hormones, um, which control everything. (laughs) Again, much longer discussion, but what you're doing by getting some natural sunlight into your retina is you are resetting the the circadian rhythm, the biological clock that you have within that controls the hormones that are released throughout the day. And so that is the fourth way to really strengthen your immunity. I love all of these. And yes, to sleep. And at night, what do you think about the blue blockers and things like that? Because we're getting all this artificial light light that can be messing up what we started in the morning if we're out there in the sun, right? 
Right. Yeah, I know. I think I think it's really an important point is that, you know, I really, really try to make sure that I am off of anything that glows, anything that has an on off button, <laughs> um, emits blue light at least 90 minutes before I go to bed, if not two hours. I really try to be really, really mindful of that. So that means I'm not checking my phone. You know, I'm not perfect. I'm very very, uh, I, 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 you know, I screw this up all the time, but I really try <laughs> hard not to. Um, but yeah, you're right. The blue light can really very, it really activates the mind. Again, it creates a busy mind. And so then it's hard to get into that rust state. Well, I'm with you there. And um, so you've got your book. It came out last year. Congratulations. Thank you. You're welcome. The Health Catalyst, How to Harness the Power of Ayurveda to Self-Heal and Achieve Optimal Wellness. It was reviewed by Gwyneth Paltrow. Amazing. Um, so tell us, what will we find in the book? You know, really the book came out of uh, the constant question that I got every time I taught anybody, a group or you know, or an individual, you know, Dr. Vanti, do you have a book? <laughs> and so I finally wrote it down. And so really, it's all the basics that we talked about. It's, you know, the first part of it is some stories, you know, to tell you sort of about me and, and my background and my reflections on, on how powerful Ayurveda is um, in the context of me being trained in Western medicine. And then the second part of the book, the, you know, the majority of the book is really these basics of Ayurveda. It's meant to be a starting place for people to really help you tap in quite literally what, what the title says to tap into the power of Ayurveda. Well, the book looks amazing. If it's anything like our conversation today, I know I will love it. So Food Heals Nation looks like you can get the book on Amazon. Where else can they get the book? Um, actually, I think you can get it anywhere the books are sold. So Barnes and Noble, I, I know all of these different places that sell it. <laughs> they sell it. I don't even know which ones, but they all sell it. Amazing. All right. And um, last question. I noticed that we haven't talked about the doshas at all. Is that something that you incorporate in your Ayurvedic practice or is that something separate? I do, but you know, my I probably have a little bit more of a controversial perspective on this in the sense of I really try to steer people away from dosha quizzes when they're first starting out with Ayurveda because I find that it just becomes another list. It becomes another thing to do and more rules to follow instead of really getting in with your intuition. Because the most important thing when you're starting with Ayurveda is what is the symptom that's coming up? What is the imbalance? And let's deal with that. So that has little to do with your dosha in the beginning, right? It's not that doshas aren't important. They are. Um, you know, that's the bioenergies. If you don't know what doshas are, it's basically the combination of the elements, um, your genetic makeup that you are born with at birth. But really, the point of that is, is that you're once you're born, you're never in that state of perfection or that perfect uh, dosha balance because that's your state of balance. You're always going to be fluctuating from that. And so really, you know, Ayurveda is a journey of what I call daily course correction, of trying to move yourself back toward balance. It's never going to be perfect. And so I really try to steer people away from doing dosha quizzes because of that. But it's also because you will get very confusing information if you don't answer the questions with some context because the questions can be misinterpreted and you'll start answering them with, you know, how things are right now when it's supposed to be, how have you been over your whole life? And so the results get all confused. Um, and so I find that if you're going to do a dosha analysis, um, that really requires that you work with an Ayurvedic practitioner so they can really guide you through that process. Okay, so the craziest thing happened to me the other day. I'm walking around Rosemary Beach, which is like the next beach town over from where I live in Santa Rosa Beach. It's got great shopping, cute coffee shops, amazing food, beautiful views at all the, you know, there's a rooftop restaurant I was at with Ashley um, Filling Gym and Katie Kremitzos the other day. Katie came for Ashley's birthday and we're sitting on the rooftop looking down at the ocean in Rosemary Beach. Just a gorgeous, gorgeous town, okay? So I was walking around the other day and I see a storefront and it's called Faraday. And I was like, there is no way 
that this is the same Faraday where I just bought a bunch of gorgeous clothes and also happens to be one of my Food Heels sponsors, right? I walk in and it is absolutely the online store in person and it was gorgeous. And I asked, you know, is this brand new? Are there a lot of stores? And they said they're opening stores really rapidly because their online following has gotten so huge that they're able to open a lot of stores. So really cool. It was a, just an interesting and cool experience to be like, oh my gosh, I actually have this store down the street from me. So I'm telling you this story because I am a fan of Faraday and you can go online and get some beautiful summer pieces, high quality, exceptionally high quality pieces at Faraday. I brought some of my new clothes here to Nashville. I'm going to be speaking. I will be going to parties and events and, you know, I'll be inside and outside. So I've got my summer stuff and I've got, you know, I brought my bomber jacket because you know how conferences are inside hotel rooms and can get quite cold. So anyways, I'm excited to be here with my new Faraday outfits and I'm excited that I've just found Faraday in my own hometown where I'm currently living. Um, they do make the perfect clothes for summer, for winter, and I'm just really excited to be working with them. So get stocked up because Faraday, just the brand, the quality is, there's nothing like it. Everything is like thick and well-made and well-designed. And it's just, those are the pieces that are going to last forever. There's no fast fashion here. So you can use my promo code food heels. You'll get 20% off all your items from Faraday. That's at FaradayBrand.com, F-A-H-E-R-T-Y Brand.com. Use my coupon code FOODHEELS and get some beautiful, timeless, modern clothing at 20% off. Or just come visit me in Rosemary Beach and we'll go shopping together. FaradayBrand.com, coupon code FOODHEELS. All right. Well, I appreciate that answer. I was just curious and I loved our conversation today so much. So you've got your website. I'll spell it for everyone. Avanti Kumar Singh, A-V-A-N-T-I-K-U-M-A-R-S-I-N-G-H.com. This will also be in the show notes. So go to her website and what will they find on the website? I know they can get the book on Amazon. You've got your Instagram. Where should people go to learn more about you? Yeah, absolutely. My Instagram is a great place to go. I'm also going to be um, launching a course at uh, the beginning of September. So you want to make sure that if you want to be in on that, that you you know join my community. Um, it'll be a great course just to learn the basics of this, of Ayurveda, really so that you can reemerge back into the post-pandemic world, um, yeah. really feeling empowered to take control of your health. All of those places. Okay. Well, that's great. I mean, thank you so much. So go to her website, go to the Instagram, follow her Avanti Kumar Singh on Instagram as well. This will all be in the show notes. Um, Dr. Avanti, I really appreciate this conversation. Thank you so much for being here today. Oh, thank you so much for having me. It's been just a pleasure being with you. Absolutely. These statements have not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. This podcast is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. Side effects of this podcast may include increased health and vitality, thoughts of living longer, developing a more positive outlook on life. In rare cases, people have experienced a strong desire to put in their Lululemons and take a yoga class while drinking a green juice. If you experience any of these symptoms, text your priest immediately.